The following program is produced by students of the Brian Lamb School of Communication at Purdue University. This week on Fast Track, we'll check out the talent at the Purdue Student Union Board's Open Mic Night. We'll also take you to Slater Hill to join students in the winter tradition of sledding. Later, we'll stop by Mackey Arena for the season's wrap-up of the men's basketball team. These stories and more are coming up on this week's edition of Fast Track. Welcome to Fast Track. We're bringing you this week's show from the bridge in Rawls Hall. I'm Don Kim. And I'm Beth Stanley. The Purdue Student Union Board works hard to bring fun-filled events and excitement to students on a weekly basis throughout the semester. The events can vary from feature films to dinner theater, and everyone is encouraged to attend. Fast Track reporter Scott Jeffrey attended an open mic night, one of Purdue Student Union Board's many events on campus. After the show, he caught up with a couple who performed on the night and learned a bit about their story. Oh, we're going to do this Boilermaker style. Let's go! Purdue's Open Mic Night is one of many events hosted by the Purdue Student Union Board, or PSUB for short. PSUB has been an active organization on Purdue's campus since 1920. The organization first consisted of only five members and was formed before the union was even built. Today, PSUB consists of more than 100 members with the organization's main purpose to provide programs and services that enrich and entertain your college experience. Our main goal on campus is just to provide opportunities for students to hang out, have a good time, meet other students and just really like kind of become more involved at Purdue, under know about the union, know about the co-rec and all of the activities that we offer kind of help them to have an excuse to go out on the weekends or during the week and have a good time and really experience all of Purdue's campus. PSUB holds at least one event every weekend which can consist of either a movie playing for flicks at Fowler, open mic night or more. On top of their weekly events, PSUB holds four late night events every semester that run from 9pm to 1am such as their carnival night. We bring in tons of inflatables and students can play games and play on the inflatables and win prizes and eat free food. For Purdue students Hannah Myers and Ken Etherton, they met at an open mic night two years ago that was held by PSUB and have been dating ever since. As the final act of the night, Hannah and Ken performed for the first time together at the last open mic night of the semester. It was my first time performing in general and then also with her. Uh, so that was, that was a little scary. Um, but I made sure to practice plenty beforehand, so uh, the nerves were mostly subsided by the time we got up on stage. And... I've been performing for a while, so but it was really cool to perform with him because he's always played music as long as I've known him, but I've never had the chance to like work with him, and so it was kind of cool to have a different type of relationship there for a couple weeks while we were practicing. The couple performed a cover of Home by Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros to a full house by Starbucks in the Union. During their performance, the crowd was dead silent while they listened to Hannah's enchanting vocals and Kent's guitar skills. The cover they chose to perform also had a special meaning for them. He's leaving next year to go uh, to grad school. So I was like, well, if we're going to perform, it might as well be like a song that we can kind of think of each other with. And I thought the lyrics were uh, conducive to that. So that and the combination that it's just a great song. It is so. just a great song. That too. My favorite act from tonight, I'd have to say the couple at the end. I like the story about how they met at open mic night two years ago and they played one of my favorite songs and they did a great job at it. So I really like kind of like the story behind it and then also how like they're coming back two years later and being able to like perform at where they met. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm Scott Jeffrey. Thanks, Scott. Amongst campus guitar players and singers, an artist with a distinct talent has emerged at Purdue. Harry Chorus is one of the most unique skills of people his age. Chorus says he found this skill when he was in high school during a visit with his cousin who is also a beatboxer. Our Fast Rig reporters discovered him at an open mic night and decided to catch up with him to get an inside scoop on how he does it. Boom, 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 boom,
Talent comes in many different forms at Purdue University. For junior Harry Chorus, it's throat singing. He calls himself Vox, a Latin term for voice. His talent is one that has taken years to master. I guess my first like beatbox sound, I would suck my cheeks and like you know you make the fish face, and then you got to bite down on your cheeks and you just kind of got to blow out a little bit. So when I was like three years old, I was like running around, like emulating that, uh, sound, a sound like that. <laughs> From race car noises to being able to layer up to five sounds, Chorus says that he's had some influence from a variety of sources. A didgeridoo from Dave Crow and beatboxing from his cousin Costa have been incorporated in making his unique sound that he's been working on since high school. I got, I got down where I could beatbox really well for like the last two weeks of, high, of, high, of senior year. So like right there, I was just like, check it. And I was like, dun, 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 dun. Uh, so then I was, and then I kind of just went into like this beatboxing mode for like the whole summer, every single day for like, the majority of the day I was beatboxing, just nonstop. Thinking about trying throat singing for yourself? With 11 different sounds and mastery of your unused lower vocal cords, this skill is not an easy one to develop. There's the throat singing, the beatboxing. Technically, there's three sounds going on when I'm doing the throat singing. So you get three sounds there, and then whatever beats I'm doing to the beatbox, so the beatboxing beat can be like seven different sounds, so then you're looking at uh, 11 things all merged together. And there's just one more quality that Chorus says is helpful. As a computer engineer, he is a very logical thinker, which helps him in arranging the layers of his music. If you high organize my beats, I'd have to explain to you essentially what's more like this logical structure that I've created for creating beats. Uh, so that that's why it's, I'm kind of, I have to like pick off pieces and then sometimes I don't, like, in order for me to show you how it connects through it, it would just take too long for me to explain. Okay, so I'm here with Harry. He's going to teach me a little bit about his talent, um, he's, and I'm going to try to learn how to do this. So we're going to start with the basic one. All right. Here we go. This is just uh, a, a basic throat singing drone sound. <clears throat> I think that's about as good as it's going to get. For Fast Track, I'm Beth Stanley. After the break, we'll visit the St. Tom's Boiler Awakening Retreat. We'll also head back to the studio to get a look at this week's weather's forecast with our meteorologist, Joseph Bauer. Later, we'll head out to Slater Hill with Fast Track reporter Maggie Jang for sledding. We are all boiler makers, but we're also much more. We're history makers, exploring the farthest reaches of our universe often when strapped to a rocket. We are hope makers, rebuilders of Haitian cityscapes who ensure they'll now withstand any disaster. We are difference makers, developers of drought-resistant crops that just might end world hunger. The fact is, what we make moves the world forward. We are Purdue, makers all. I am an American. 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 That's the way most of us put it, just matter of fact. They're plain words, those four. You could write them on your thumbnail or sweep them across a bright autumn sky. But remember, too, that they are more than just words. They are a way of life. So whenever you speak them, speak them firmly. Speak them proudly. Speak them gratefully. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. That we do, and, and we try and 
and you, yeah, you. Have you ever dreamed of being on TV? Well, in the Brian Lamb School of Communication, we do more than that. You can learn about camera operation, lighting techniques, live TV shows, real client PSAs, weekly news productions, and more. For more information about the video production programs, visit our website or the advising office. Boiler Awakening is a nationwide student-led retreat held through the St. Tom's on Purdue's campus. The first Awakening retreat was held in 1974 in Lake Charles, Louisiana. There are currently over 50 Awakening programs in universities and dioceses across the country. Fast Track reporter Erica Lewin has the story. Boiler Awakening is a three-day student-led Christian retreat that is designed for all college-age students from Purdue University and the surrounding area. By the end of BA, I hope to have a greater trust in God. By the end of the weekend, I hope to gain a lot of friendships and strengthen my love for Christ through those love and the friendships that I gain here and just have an overall community that I know I can rely on my friends for. Boiler Awakening seeks to strengthen students' relationship with Christ. I really wanted to lead Boiler Awakening because I've been, had the opportunity to be a part of several Boiler Awakenings and I've been able to see um, the impact that it's had on my faith life and the faith life of people around me. And just being a part of that and knowing like awesome things that are being done makes me really excited. Um, I've been involved in it a long time and I really love the program. I love what it has the opportunity to do. Um, and so I really wanted to be able to kind of evaluate um, why it is that we do all the specific things that we do on this retreat and um, to really um, focus it on our main mission, which is to um, bring others to the realization of um, what they could be doing in their lives to grow in their relationship with God. BA is held at Central Catholic High School in Lafayette. The weekend includes a variety of talks, activities, and reflection designed to allow each retreater to be awakened to the Holy Spirit within him or her. By the end of BA, I hope to reestablish my faith in God and to make sure he's a more vital part of my everyday life. I'm hoping to reconnect with the St. Tom's community and to become closer with my personal spirituality. I hope that they, um, they leave here seeing all the beauty that's in themselves and um, knowing that they are loved by God um, and making the commitment to um, live their lives in a way that shows their love for him back. And um, I want them, I want this experience to be an opportunity for them to be awakened to um, what what they could be doing and what their um, what God wants them to do in their lives. Uh, a deep relationship with God, that's like the ultimate thing, I guess, that can take on many forms. Um, and depending on where people are in their faith life, it can be many ways, but that's our main goal that we have here. All college students, regardless of religion, are invited to attend this retreat that is held twice a year, once each in the fall and spring. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm Erica Lewin. Thanks, Erica. Meteorologist Joseph Bauer is back in the studio with a look at this week's weather forecast. Joseph? Thanks, guys. It's, we've been talking some active weather here coming back from spring break, and many of you getting off the plane or just coming back from the, getting out of the car and whatnot, it's been cold. Um, and we're still below average the last three days here coming in Tuesday this week. 28, 22, and 41 here for our lows. Um, the last three days we've been just relatively below normal just throughout the entire just winter and it's still, still holding on to us. But uh, I do have good news here. Normal is 54, but we're going to be seeing some bigger uh, and warmer temperatures coming in um, into the area next week. But temperatures just around the kind of the national picture here, we've been seeing kind of this this trend here with the temperatures cooling as you head um, to our north and back to our east and just kind of this then gradient that's just been setting up 
and those weather systems have just really been forming off this and just coming down right into our area. It's been a consistency, and we're still seeing that, so we're still expecting to see an active weather pattern um, with just systems coming day in and day out. And uh, you know, our current, currently fronts and uh, surface systems around the United States, pretty quiet. Uh, we have high pressure that'll be moving into our area for the short term here. Uh, you're watching this Friday, this is Thursday, and so by the time you're watching this tomorrow evening, it will be just over our north, and so we'll be seeing some fair weather conditions at least for the short term. But for tonight, uh, we're going to be looking at some nice conditions coming in at 7 p.m., starting off just below freezing here, and it'll be cooling off behind me as 7 a.m., 18 degrees, so it'll definitely be cool. You'll want the jacket if you're going out on, uh, around this, this evening into Saturday morning. But let's take a look at your short-term forecast here. Uh, this is just a map I've got up. As I mentioned here, high pressure, this is uh, Friday night, so eight, about 8 p.m. Friday night, moving into Saturday. High pressure will be shifting to our east. Saturday morning here, high pressure continues to hold uh, those fair weather conditions. So this, we're looking like a pretty, gonna have a pretty nice weekend moving in. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. We got 38 and 48, we're gonna be warming up. Um, but sat Sunday afternoon, Sunday later afternoon is when we have some potential for showers moving in. So let's take a look at that and see if we can't zero down timing at all. This is starting off at Sunday here. I'll let the loop restart and you'll see some showers that are, that are starting up going into, uh, this is actually middle next week. We have potential for some really strong storms coming in. Um, but Sunday, Sunday, if I can get the loop coming back here, um, you'll see just a brief uh, shot of showers coming through. It's not gonna repeat, um, but you saw it. Um, and as well as the bigger picture here going into next week, what you saw that the, those rain showers that are moving through, that'll be coming in on Wednesday, potentially giving us our first shot of severe weather for the season. So believe it or not, we're already moving into April, haven't seen that much severe weather yet, um, but we'll be talking about it coming into mid next week and even late next week. So here's your five day forecast here. Um, as I mentioned, Wednesday and Friday are those, the two big days. And so uh, severe weather coming in on Wednesday and maybe a chance of rain on Friday as well. Sledding on Slater is a winter tradition at Purdue that many students participate in. They can be seen sliding down on sleds, food trays, and even mattresses. Although sledding on Slater is common during the winter months, there are students who have never gone before, including Fast Drag reporter Maggie Jane. We sent Maggie to Slater for the first time to share this Purdue tradition with you. Heavy snow hit Purdue on Sunday, March 1st, which made going to school on Monday even harder. However, on Slater Hill, students made light of the snow by enjoying a popular tradition at Purdue. Even though it was late afternoon on Monday, there were still few people who came to enjoy the sledding. This is, I don't even remember how many times I've been sledding on Slater, but um, it's always one of my favorite Purdue pastimes. As one of the oldest Purdue winter traditions, sledding on Slater always seems to spark some fun stories. Once last year, when I came sledding with some friends, um, people had taken trash bags and they had put in, put the trash bags on themselves, and they like formed this like giant train like wave type thing. With, like it's a huge group of people, and they like all went down like the hill together, and I was like, well, <laughs> this is crazy. This freshman year, I made the mistake of trying to use a a mattress to slide down <laughs> the hill. <laughs> it wasn't my mattress, it was already out here, and I thought that was a good idea. Why Not a good it idea. a mistake? Well, because we went about five feet, <laughs> fell on our face, like, slid off onto our face, <laughs> off the sled, and then there was, it was full of people, so everyone was laughing. Okay. <laughs> I've used a variety of methods of sledding, you know, besides trays and whatnot. I've even used, you know, broken sleds and even a bucket once, which I actually managed really well <laughs> on. Um, but yeah, it's always one of my favorite things to come out to Slater, you know, every winter at Purdue and go sledding. And, you know, it's one of my favorite pastimes here, so. For some first timers, sledding brought a lot of excitement. It's really good, cool, and I came with my friends. It's actually really good. Uh, I think I'm going to do that tomorrow, or next year, maybe. This is my first time here sledding at Slater Hill. I am using a tray that my sister has so graciously provided me. It's been a pretty fun experience so far, and um, I've crashed a few times, and overall it's been a pretty fun experience. I'm glad I actually made it out here today. Snow only lasted for a day. After March 2nd, 
Weather warmed up, melting the snow and ice, indicating that spring is on its way. Next winter, we hope to hear more laughter from Slatter Hill. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm Maggie Zhang. See ya! Coming up, we'll learn about the negative effects skipping a meal can have on students. Later in sports, we'll head to the Mac Arena where the Purdue men's basketball team took on Illinois. Stay tuned. We are all Boilermakers, but we're also much more. We're history makers, exploring the farthest reaches of our universe, often when strapped to a rocket. We are hope makers, rebuilders of Haitian cityscapes who ensure they'll now withstand any disaster. We are difference makers, developers of drought-resistant crops that just might end world hunger. The fact is, what we make moves the world forward. We are Purdue, makers all. I am an American. 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 That's the way most of us put it, just matter of fact. They're plain words, those four. You could write them on your thumbnail, or sweep them across a bright autumn sky. But remember too, that they are more than just words. They are a way of life. So whenever you speak them, speak them firmly. Speak them proudly, speak them gratefully. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for man. That we do, and, and we try, and and you. Yeah, you. Have you ever dreamed of being on TV? Well, in the Brian Lamb School of Communication, we do more than that. You can learn about camera operation, lighting techniques, live TV shows, real client PSAs, weekly news productions, and more. For more information about the video production programs, visit our website or the advising office. Purdue has a well-developed dining system, including five dining courts and a food court in the student union. However, not all students eat meals regularly due to busy schedules. Skipping meals may lead to inadequate nutrition and an altered metabolism. Fast Track reporter Sharon Kai has researched with the Food Science Department to explore the importance of not skipping a meal. When the schoolwork is getting heavier, to keep a healthy diet is important to all college students. So if you skip lunch, you will not get enough nutrient for the whole day. And uh, your school performance, especially for the afternoon, will um, decrease. However, at Purdue, most students didn't realize the importance of lunch. Um, if I don't have any early morning classes, I'll usually grab lunch. Breakfast is usually fairly small because I don't always get up early enough and lunch is just uh, to buy me over. Skipping lunch is not a good habit for college students. Students who are hungry because they have skipped lunch are distracted in the classroom. Skipping meals reduces students' ability to pay attention, making less effective at school in the afternoon. Also, a long-time skipping lunch habit will lead to malnutrition which will interfere the normal physical and mental development. I mean, I'd, I'd be pretty hungry if I missed lunch. And you can't function without food and so while you're doing work. In order to provide an easy way for students to get lunch, Purdue has a well-developed dining system, including five different dining courts and various restaurants at the underground level at Purdue Memorial Union. As you can see, there is a variety choice of different restaurants, including Italian food, American food, Mexican food, and Asian food. For a healthy lunch, it's usually considered as well-balanced, well-nourished lunch. Good choices for a student's lunch include raw vegetables, whole grains, and lean meat, 
or other protein sources. Uh, for a uh, well-balanced lunch, I usually recommend uh, high protein, uh, slow digestible starch, and uh, lower fat content. Students should avoid empty calories from in junk food and the snacks with high sugar or fat content, and drink plenty of water with lunch. In general, no matter what kind of reason you had, uh, skip lunch is not healthy to you. And uh, I think most interesting part is that for college students, if um, they skip uh, lunch, probably they will gain weight after all, instead of losing weight. Off-campus restaurants could also be a good choice for lunch. Some Chinese restaurants offer delivery during the lunchtime. Reporting from Fast Track, I'm Sharon Tsai. Thanks, Sharon. The Purdue men's basketball team took on Illinois on March 7th for their final home game of the season. In the previous meeting, the Boilermakers let Illinois end the game on an 18-8 run, giving them one of the largest setbacks of their season. The Boilermakers were not only seeking a victory for revenge, but also for their seniors. And their 7th 20-win season under Matt Painter and their 25th 20-win season of all time. Fast Track reporter Haiyang Guo has more on the game. The Purdue men's basketball team hosted their final game in Mackey against the Illinois on senior day before the postseason. The Illinois jumped out to an early lead on the Boilermakers led by the play of Levante Rice. Purdue trailed by as many as 13 points in the first half, but a late rally led by A.J. Hammonds brought the Boilermakers with five points at halftime. Purdue coach Matt Painter credited that late rally with providing the momentum the team needed for a victory. We got off to a rough start, uh, but we, I thought we defended well. And it, you know, it kept us in the game, and it kept us in striking distance and got a little momentum going into halftime. And then, you know, we had a, obviously we had a good start to the second half, and that, that, was, that was key for us. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year Junior guard Rayfield Davis said getting senior John Octius and Neil Bashir's a victory in their final home game was the driving factor for the Boilermakers. Senior night, you play for your seniors. I mean, that's the reason you play the whole season, for your fans, for your seniors. So to be able to get a win on senior night, it was huge. And the way to be able to send our seniors out on a good note was unbelievable. Davis collected 17 out of his team-high 18 points in the second half, while fellow All Big Ten defensive team member AJ Hammonds collected his 14th career double double. Hammonds scored 16 points and collected 10 rebounds. Senior John Octius, playing his final game in Mackey, collected 11 points and 2 assists. A fifth year senior in his only season with the Boilermakers, Octius answered Coach Painter's call to lead and prepare the underclassmen for Big Ten play. But as far as uh, the older guys playing well, um, I think it's more vocally he means, you know, growing up, you know, just being able to handle things and, you know, not shut down, you know, help help our younger guys out, and, and that's exactly what happened. Octias credit rarely used the freshman point guard P.J. Thompson with providing a spark off the bench. Without the young guys, we weren't be we weren't going to be able to pull it out tonight. Um, P.J. came in, gave us great minutes. While Octias credit Thompson for his play off the bench. P.J. believes the main reason he could come forward in the game was the confidence he gained from the leadership of the upperclassmen. The guys on the team have been, uh, been all over me, and uh, I mean, I credit it to those guys because without that, I mean, my confidence could have gone away. I could have been down on myself and pouting, but I just tried to keep my head up and I keep competing in practice and making these guys better. And, and uh, my number got called today, and I, I was able to pl uh, play well and give our team a boost of energy. Senior day is always bittersweet. But the victory over Illinois completed a 20-win season and earned Purdue a third-place finish in the Big Ten. A remarkable feat considering his team finished dead last only a season ago. While fans will be sad over the loss of Octias and Bashirs, the freshman class of Vince Edwards, Isaac Haas, Dakota Mathias, P.J. Thompson, and the red-shirting Jaquil Taylor will continue the legacy of Purdue basketball for years to come. As the tournament is coming up, the Boilermakers are ready to take off their first game on next week. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm Haiyang Guo. That's all the time we have for this week's edition of Fast Track. I'm Don Kim. And I'm Beth Stanley. Join us again next week as we bring you more stories around Purdue's campus. See you then.